we were always a very different family. We didn't look quite Indian and we were very westernized. And my parents were very trendy. My dad had long hair, wore a leather jacket, was a car mechanic, very cool, had lots of Irish friends. So that's where the leather jacket comes from. That's where this thing about leather comes from. Yeah, and probably, you know, and I, I also remembered him just being very kind of into rock and roll, into reggae. It was, it was a really lively house we, we lived in, full of colour and life and sound. My mother was very classy. She was very kind of, you know, glamorous. She, I never saw my mother not made up or dressed, you know, fabulously. Welcome to Hoffman's and Henley. I'm looking at some classic cars and there's an amazing selection here. I learned how to sell wills. Now that's a very difficult thing to sell, the last will and testament. So I got used to sales and doing sales calls, cold calling, which is a tricky thing to do. And no one likes cold calling. No. The rejection's hard to deal with. Real, but it taught me about rejection. And that's also a very important skill when it comes to a business, because without sales, you've got no business. But may I ask on that point, um, were you trained on how to deal with rejection? Was it just trial and error? No, it's just trial and error. No one said this is how you deal with a value objection, a price objection, you know, um, no one taught me about that. You, you just went in and did it. But where did you learn? How did you get better at yeah. dealing with rejection? Yeah, so I think that actually came through quite later on. I, I, I was able to contextualise it. <laughs> bookkeeping and the consistency I was making money and I had extra money in my pocket which was sure. which helped my education as a doctor and also it allowed me to potentially understand about dreaming big because once you start feeling that little trickle of encouragement I've got a little bit more than I would have got you start to think bigger and I chose what was a very long or very competitive career path in plastic surgery then craniofacial surgery then being trained in the United States and then coming back as an ear reconstruction surgeon. It's very niche, very competitive. I couldn't have done that without having that kind of financial, how can I say that, the knowledge that I, was, I could afford to, to push myself and, and pay for the right education, pay for the right courses. Sure. Because the NHS didn't fund half my education. You know, It just really didn't. The NHS, you, a course on the NHS, one course would wipe out your whole study budget. Yet as a doctor, you're required to learn so much in such, a, in such a short period of time. And doctors are having to pay thousands of pounds of their own money to be educated. And everyone thinks that the NHS pays their education. The NHS pays virtually nothing for a doctor's education. And See, I would not have known, I wouldn't no. have realised that. And so you have to, if you, what people have to realise is that when a doctor trains to be a specialist, they are putting a lot of, majority of money is coming from themselves to be that specialist. Wow. And so they should have the expectation that their investment is rewarded with them being valued at the end of it for that, wow. that, that investment they've made in trying to help others. Our key topic for today is going to be creative finance mindset. Have That's I got that right? Absolutely right. Yeah. Right. So tell us a little bit, because it's a great title. It's a very catchy title. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, what, is, what does it mean? Anyone who has studied the techniques will realise that they've they're not new techniques. They've been used by investors since the beginning of time. Some would say that creative finance techniques have been used during biblical times, if you look at property transactions and how property was bought and sold. And that all I've done is apply those techniques as a healthcare professional and given another group of another audience exposure to them. Right. And that mindset's important because it's very easy to stop thinking. It's thinking, I haven't got any money. How am I going to invest in property? Well, that person with no money is in the same boat as the wealthy person who's got a portfolio who's also run out of money. Sure, sure. Understand. And that's where the mindset comes. And that's why it's important to embrace those techniques. My property coaching program basically shares those techniques and also structures property investment deals using 
the techniques of creative finance. All these techniques of investing come under the umbrella, the creative financial okay. mindset. Mindset being key, because if people have a closed mind or a negative mindset, or they're thinking that, oh, it's, it's I don't like the ideas, it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's not. It's very clear and in my property coaching program I go through that as, as 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 part of it I mean there's lots of things in my program lots of things you know I I don't frown upon traditional property investing I've done it and it's just right for certain doctors or certain people but for those that really want to grow and really want to accelerate and actually get the cash flow which I think is vital in in today's day and age you can't do it because you will run out of life before you get enough money to invest in property because the property prices are still way beyond what most people of can course. ever afford